A 40-hour armed standoff between police and a man in Melbourne ended peacefully today. The siege began on Wednesday evening when the man, armed with a shotgun and a high-powered rifle, had an argument with his wife, then refused police appeals to leave the house. That night, he allegedly fired at least a dozen shots, but no one was hurt. The 38-year-old man has been charged and will face court on Monday. The Sydney Olympics has been touted as a potential bonanza for the whole of Australia. And according to a new survey, it could come true. While the financial crisis to our north has cut tourism from Asia, it seems Americans are keen to catch the games. Meanwhile, more details of ticketing plans have been released. We know there'll be a national ballot and that some tickets may be as cheap as 10 bucks, others possibly more than a thousand. Now, detail of an all-in-one ticket. When you buy your ticket, it will entitle you to free public transport. A ticket to any event will include all train and bus fares. Meantime, selling tickets overseas shouldn't prove a problem. Figures released from the Australian Tourism Commission show one in five American tourists want to come here in 2000. A lot of Americans are definitely interested in coming to Australia for the Olympics and leading up to the Olympics and after the Olympics. And for the fifth consecutive year, Australia has been voted the number one destination for US tourists. But distance remains the hurdle. It's not as far as you think. Michael Usher for Nightline. The Irish, North and South, are tonight voting on the peace accord that will hopefully bring an end to decades of bloodshed in Ulster. If it's passed, the accord would see the development of cross-border authorities to handle many areas of government. In return, it waters down the South's long-held constitutional claim to Northern Ireland. This morning, there has been an unprecedented rush to the polls. One electoral officer called it quite extraordinary. The overall turnout could be over 80%. The political leaders were among the first to vote. The impression I have in here is that polling is fairly brisk. Morning, everyone. Ian Paisley believes it is the most critical poll in nearly 30 years. Oh, it's a very historic day. One of the most historic days that Ulster has ever experienced. The parties in the Irish Republic are also hoping for a big turnout. President Mary McAleese voted early at a school near her official residence. The main focus of attention, however, will be north of the border. Here the campaign between divided unionists has been intense. I voted yes, and I feel that is very important for the people here to uh, get together and give it a chance. I certainly object very strongly to the idea of terrorist ruling this country, irrespective of whether they've got a political mandate or not. It is the extent of the split within unionism that will be the crucial factor today. John Irvine reporting for Nightline. There's been a spectacular eruption of a volcano in Guatemala. Rivers of lava poured down the mountain slopes, endangering local farms. And ash showered on villages and the nearby capital, Guatemala City. Authorities fear the eruptions could worsen and are preparing to evacuate the region. Hollywood actor Charlie Sheen is in stable condition after a drug overdose. 32-year-old Sheen, star of such films as Wall Street and Platoon, arrived at hospital in Los Angeles, conscious but complaining of tingling in his hands and difficulty walking. Doctors won't say what substances he'd taken. His father, actor Martin Sheen, says his son, who has a history of drug and alcohol abuse, is recovering well. Retired couple Frank and Shirley Capacci from Chicago have topped up their superannuation and then some. They're the sole winners in the world's richest jackpot lotto and they'll soon be getting a cheque for about $140 million. They're giving some of it away to family and friends but have no fancy plans for themselves yet. Frank and Shirley Capassi are celebrating, and why not? The retired suburban Chicago couple claims to hold the winning ticket to the biggest jackpot in U.S. history. I got the numbers. I got it in the bank. Their luck came with a sunrise in Pell Lake, Wisconsin. And this little grocery where their ticket was bought from Pat Penyon and Marion Kasserag. I was totally confused when I woke up this morning. It's starting to come alive right now. The news spread fast through this quiet little resort town of boats and cabins. Now invaded by out-of-towners, satellite trucks, even a pretender everyone first believed had won the prize. 
I wish. In July of 93, Lee Robbins and Colleen Devris were engaged to be married and shared $111 million. Today, they're married, but to different people. You got to be the shortest millionaire I've ever seen. <laughs> if verified by Wisconsin lottery officials, the Capasis, by choosing the lump sum cash payment, will receive less than the $195 million jackpot, about $104 million. Then state and federal income taxes will claim at least half of that. In a moment, America's gun laws and the teenagers with death at their fingertips. The United States is once again coping with the shocking reality of its gun culture, a reality that sadly comes as no shock at all. The country is simply awash with guns, an estimated 200 million in private hands. And children seem to have no trouble getting hold of them when they want to. In fact, for many children, gunplay is all a big game. With the echo of today's school shooting in Oregon reverberating into the American conscience, many authorities are asking what more can be done. Some schools have metal detectors, others have police dogs, and although 6,000 guns were taken from students last year, security has its limits. The schools were not built for that kind of security, so the numbers of windows, doors, and other means of getting weapons in uh, are plentiful. Uh, we have trouble keeping weapons out of prisons, much less out of schools. What makes it even harder for gun control is a society that promotes gunplay like no other. And one of the fastest growing gun sports is practical shooting. The aim is to hit targets in the chest, and at this California shooting range, this competitor was just eight years old. We're going to have to put another round in again. One of the two boys accused of the Arkansas school murders, Andrew Golden, was a graduate of practical shooting. And the experience showed most of the five dead were hit square in the chest. Critics say practical shooting is no sport, but practice for urban warfare, the type of training that police undergo. What they're doing with children is they're teaching them that shooting at human shapes and so forth is okay. And not only is it okay, it's good. But other shooters defend their sport, saying children need to know the truth about firearms. They develop a little bit of a fear about guns because they think it's not really the social thing to do. Get out here and learn to shoot a rifle or a pistol or a shotgun and enjoy it. It's just as much fun as soccer or some of these other things you kids could get into. And the access young people have to guns in America is extraordinary because they have to be 21 to buy a pistol, these teenagers at Don's gun store in Indianapolis can only shop for rifles. I can sell you this, you 18, I can sell you that. Yeah, I can sell you that, 18. And like many young Americans, they know their weapons. Popular culture has seen to that. Well, you see them hold it that way. That's it. You see them in the movies. On TV, yeah. On TV, right? Movies where the heroes pack a weapon have made guns a fashion accessory. And retailers know that if Tommy Lee Jones in U.S. Marshals is carrying a Glock pistol, that's what the young buyers want. But I'm not a cop. A gun dealer is not a cop. If I were to grab them up, they could sue me. I'm not in the police. But it's pretty obvious that those are really young guys. And I'm going to tell you something. The young guys are the dangerous guys. Thanks for the business. Yep. With actual gun sales in America declining, Experts say a worrying trend is that guns are being increasingly marketed towards young people. There is an absolute urgency among gun manufacturers to reach out, sell guns to kids, and recruit them into the gun culture because they realize if they don't do that, they don't have a future. Many gun magazines now feature ads of kids with weapons, but more Americans are realizing that although children can be encouraged to shoot for the thrill, they're also learning how to shoot to kill. Raymond Dale for Nightline. And still to come on Nightline, the finance and weather, and in sport tonight's rugby league state of origin. And the Australians on target at the Hockey World Cup. <music> now to sport and tonight's rugby league state of origin opener. The match is being replayed on uh, some network stations right after Nightline, so if you don't want to know the result, we suggest you uh, dash from the room for a couple of minutes. The United game brought a return to the thrilling origin clashes of old. It was a bruising affair from start to finish, 
with a lead seesawing throughout the match. In the end, though, the Maroons snatched victory at the death, the Blues scoring five tries to four. Mark Barlin with the details. Here they are. With the United competition, this state of origin had the look of the good old days. Certainly, there was nothing new about the first points. Langer's familiar brother for Kevin Walters. Renoff thought he'd stretched the lead five minutes later. Plague called back for interference. No doubt about the Blues' reply. A well-executed set play had Wishart unmarked and over in the corner. Wishart is over! The game was at lightning pace already, but Daly and Brasher combined to make everyone else look slow. The defence hanging off just too long. He's going to go there, and he puts it down. Daly made the incredible look simple for the Blues' third of the half. Andrew Johns adding a field goal for a seven-point lead at the break. It looks OK. Queensland kicks reversed the pressure early in the second term, and the Blues cracked. First, McDougal. Then Daly's hands deserted him. Again, Daly makes a mistake, Langer scores. That put Queensland back in front, but not for long. Bittler steamrolling his way over. It's another try for New South Wales. The Blues then scored what looked to be the match winner, swinging the ball through the hands to find Menzies open. He's in the score. Five down and a minute to go, Queensland kicked and regathered out of its own quarter to mount one last attack. And another legendary origin finish was born. Well, what a game of rugby league. Lockyer converted for the win. The blokes, they never give up, and uh, that's what happens if you play for 80 minutes. Mark Barlin for Nightline. Former Australian cricket captain Greg Chappell is coming back to the game as manager of the South Australian team. Chappell will work at all levels, trying to lift a dispirited team from the bottom. Well, I'm more interested in talking about the future than the, the past. I'm very comfortable with the amount of talent that's here. Chappell says he wants the Redbacks to adopt the more positive style of past South Australian teams. Australia has bolted from the blocks at the Hockey World Cup in the Netherlands. The Kookaburras trounced Poland 8-0 in the opening match. Maiden Shoppy and Jay Stacey scoring two goals apiece. At times it was a cakewalk as Australia toyed with the Polish defence. Get this Smith does though and scores for Australia. The Kookaburras took the upper hand early and the Poles wilted under pressure. Goals flowed and Australia was rarely extended. Can he find Choppy? He does! The 8-0 victory put the Kookaburras on top of their group. And there's Lewis and he scores! Fine tuning for Sunday's Formula One race at Monaco where Michael Schumacher is aiming for his fourth win in five years. The German has left the Ferrari mechanics with extra work, while Jack Villeneuve's Red Williams needs bodywork after this incident. Championship leader Mika Hakkinen was fastest in the practice session. Ken Sutcliffe for Nightline. To finance, and the Australian share market closed seven points down today. In Tokyo, the Nikkei fell 43 points. In London tonight, the FT100 was 11 points up in morning trading. Gold is fetching $300.90, US announced. And in European trading tonight, the Australian dollar is buying 62.87 US cents, 1.1 Deutsche Marks, 85 yen, and 38p. The national weather, and there's a high over eastern Australia. Cold fronts are approaching Victoria, and a high is moving through the west. The forecast, fine for Darwin and Brisbane, fine also in Sydney and Canberra. Wet and windy for Melbourne, showers in Hobart, but easing in Adelaide, and for Perth, a fine day tomorrow. And that's the news this Friday night from all of us here at Nightline. Have a great weekend. Good night. Free public transport. A ticket to any event will include all train and bus fares. Meantime, selling tickets overseas shouldn't prove a problem. Figures released from the Australian Tourism Commission show one in five American tourists want to come here in 2000. A lot of Americans are definitely interested in coming to Australia for the Olympics and leading up to the Olympics and after the Olympics. And for the fifth consecutive year, Australia has been voted the number one destination for US. This morning, there has been an unprecedented rush to the polls one electoral officer called it quite extraordinary. The overall turnout could be over 80%. The political leaders were among the first to vote. The impression I have in here is that polling is fairly brisk. 
Morning, everyone. Ian Paisley believes it is the most critical poll in nearly 30 years. Oh, it's a very historic day. One of the most historic days that Ulster has. A 40-hour armed standoff between police and a man in Melbourne ended peacefully today. The siege began on Wednesday evening when the man, armed with a shotgun and a high-powered rifle, had an argument with his wife, then refused police appeals to leave the house. That night, he allegedly fired at least a dozen shots, but no one was hurt. The 38-year-old man has been charged and will face court on Monday. The Sydney Olympics has been touted as a potential bonanza for the whole of Australia. And according to a new survey, it could come true. While the financial crisis to our north has cut tourism from Asia, it seems Americans are keen to catch the games. Meanwhile, more details of ticketing plans have been released. We know there'll be a national ballot and that some tickets may be as cheap as 10 bucks, others possibly more than a thousand. Now, detail of an all-in-one ticket. When you buy your ticket, it will entitle you to... Fresh tourists. But distance remains the hurdle. It's not as far as you think. Michael Usher for Nightline. The Irish, North and South, are tonight voting on the peace accord that will hopefully bring an end to decades of bloodshed in Ulster. If it's passed, the accord would see the development of cross-border authorities to handle many areas of government. In return, it waters down the South's long-held constitutional claim to Northern Ireland.